very fortunate you know, enough to meet you and and their onwards wherever it led to my you know journey um so well without further ado uh, if i may uh, the practice that i started with my collaborators is called eco-responsive environments um and um uh, uh and it is by the same name of our upcoming book. Uh, so the book that uh, you know Manisha re referred to was Responsive Environment, which was written in 1985. Now we are working on a new book, which is called Eco-Responsive Environments, and we open the practice by the same name. So today's presentation uh, sort of draws from it. Um, you know, almost what is the basic structure of the book? Um, so so let's just write dive into this um, okay so and, right there we go so um i've called this uh you know this evening's talk um as joined up thinking um and the reason um uh, for you know calling this title is and when when i actually did my course i realized uh, urban design is about uh, understanding all other disciplines and it is something that the current practice across cultures um you know faces in terms of fragmentation of different disciplines which leads to uh, non-coherent developments and a lot of blame game in, in that process. So unintentionally, unintentionally we, we all find our ways of thinking and working uh, boxed in by boundaries of our professional cultures. Um, and we keep working within our own silos. From within each silo, crisis overall situation always looks like someone else's problem and therefore we always happen to blame someone else for whatever the problem we face. Urban design and architecture is essentially about breaking that silo. Um, and we must therefore minimize our professional myopia because it exposes uh, all designers to danger of making well-intended decisions in ways that affect other disciplines and through them the settlement as a whole in unintended ways. Now, no, nobody designs problems on purpose, um, but no design situation has an exact precedent uh, and designers usually have to work within a complex web of others' interests. These two factors exposes designers at all the scales to the risk of making well-meant decisions that generate unintended consequences. For example, um, some innovative internal layouts within a building may affect the building's interface with adjoining streets, which may affect people's perception of the street's own atmosphere. In turn, this may affect people's decisions about whether to walk, cycle, or travel by car or public transport. These decisions then have even more wider implications, ranging from level of air pollution to the amount of exercise people can take in their everyday lives. The consequences now range wider still, from climate change to the overall state of public health. In turn, the consequences of climate change may trigger migration, even in extreme circumstances, or raise ethnic conflicts to the level of warfare, and so on. So in an in a infinitely widening chain of unintended consequence. Um, historically, um, the ideas within design cultures evolved through everyday experience to avoid repeating unintended negative impacts. Over time, however, the capacity of this benign um, cultural evolution was overwhelmed by the increasing scale and speed of urban change. 
right around 1960s, as we see the, this curve taking off, it is known as the Great Acceleration, which is about planetary scale processes of change driven by human actions, which mark our new age of humans, also known as the Anthropocene Age. As um, economist uh, Kate Rayworth points out, humanity's 21st century challenge is to meet the needs of all within the means of the planet. In other words, um, to ensure that no one falls short on life's essentials, from food, housing, to healthcare and political voice, whilst ensuring that collectively we do not overshoot our pressure on Earth's life-supporting systems on which we fundamentally depend, such as stable climate, fertile soils, and protective ozone layer, and, and so on. Uh, between the social and planetary boundary lies an environmentally safe and a socially just space in which humanity can thrive. Therefore, our aim as designers and architects should be uh, about how to create this safe and just space, uh, thereby minimizing unintended consequences uh, through design in this Anthropocene world. Uh, in order to create this safe and just space, we need to understand how settlements work. Um, settlements are complex systems, which means uh, there are systems within systems within systems within systems, which are all nested together. So for settlements, these subsystems are natural infrastructure, uh, public linkage network, plot systems, and buildings. Now, these subsystems, which are nested within one another, are not only nested in space, but also in time, because they inherently change at different rates. For example, um, the landform and the water system of the natural infrastructure are the longest lived subsystem of all. Um, they, they last for ecological time um, through uh, folding of uh, plates um, and, and terrain changes and etc. Um, then comes uh, the public space systems, which may last for uh, millennia. Then comes the plot systems, which last for about centuries, and then come about. Then comes buildings, which currently uh, have uh, have they have had a, a decreasing rate uh, of life expectancy. Um, so, as you can see, how these different subsystems have different length of um, longevity, but also. Uh, different rates of change. This forms the basis uh, of a framework for analysis or design decision making by asking relevant questions to each subsystem. So let's start with the natural infrastructure. Um, natural infrastructure consists of water system and green system and organisms living in them. Now the thing is, why 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 does it matter? Why why do we need to, you know, why bother about it? Um, all human life depend ultimately on ecosystem services, which is underpinned by natural infrastructure, um, which is the solidity of the ground on which we stand, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the raw materials we use to construct physical environment, the energy for powering transport, uh, the trees, the flowers that afford sensory enjoyment, all these things are drawn ultimately from a wider ecosystem within which you know a project, a site is embedded. So the, the things that I just mentioned, they, these are called ecosystem services. Um, however, the capacity of these services to support our needs um, are declining. Uh, and this uh, puts pressure on the natural capital and and the worst, and it is worsening the life chances of future generations. Therefore, our aim should be about how to protect uh, and enable uh, the ongoing support 
from ecosystem services uh, and to deliver you know uh, these affordances in practice uh, the natural infrastructure needs to be uh, closely interwoven with the spaces for human use and we need a way of thinking about the space that is equally relevant to humans and other natural systems now the discipline of uh, landscape ecology understands landscapes as patches of habitat linked by corridors uh, which facilitate movement of the of different biodiverse species from one patch to another. Um, now, at each scale, the landscapes, patches, and corridors are linked together within uh, the within their matrix by flows of materials, energy, information, uh, and organisms, including us. It is these flows that deliver. Uh, the ecosystem services that I mentioned earlier and serving human needs. Therefore, our aim is to create a natural infrastructure which is highly connected, because if it is only through a very highly connected green network that these flows become possible, therefore leads to the ecosystem services on which we depend. Um, right, now um, moving on to the street network or rather we, we call this the movement system which is not necessarily the streets itself but also includes things like rails and other modes of movement um, now again why does it matter uh, it matters because there are conduits of economic transaction and hence um, development of a place um, the overall purpose of the movement network is to afford opportunities for experiencing other people and places beyond the, their immediate household. The availability of affordances depend on the area that people can access within a practicable uh, travel time. That depends on speed of travel, which in turn depends on the movement technologies available. Uh, the desire to maximize these affordances has underpinned the evolution of movement landscape, the movement technologies, uh, from an initial reliance on, on feet of people and animals through public transport, to bikes, to private cars, to aeroplanes, and, and who knows what's gonna come in future. This evolution has complex implications, both for social foundation and ecological ceiling. Uh, by that, I mean, uh, modes which are available to all of us including all social groups and and how does that impact uh, the bigger climate in terms of carbon emissions now since 1950s um, settlements have uh, grown to become car dependent um, mostly because it affords high level of choice and access that potentially supports you know social foundation um, it offers high flexibility and choice of routes and expands travel range, which, which before that period used to be very difficult or time consuming to get from A to B uh, if, if it were beyond the range of uh, walking distance or even horse rides. Um, however, it is not available to everyone. Um, things like, uh, well, or people like uh, kids or, or very elderly people or disabled cannot use cars by themselves. Um, and also uh, people who do not have enough money to afford a car. Um, therefore, it exacerbates the inequality, creating health impacts of air pollution from particulate emission and ecological ceiling through carbon emissions, therefore causing the bigger um, problems of global warming. Um, therefore, our aim is to uh, develop an approach uh, to designing public space networks that encourage people to use various available travel modes in ways that support long-term health and well-being for all. Um, spatially, we do that by joining up the street system to create a permeable network for cycling, walking, public transport, even private cars. So the idea is reducing or getting rid of car dependency, not cars themselves. Um, next is uh, the plot system. Um, 
plots are very important uh, and to be honest uh, especially in the west it's a concept that uh, almost forgotten um which is quite the contrary at least in a, uh, in india and and other uh you know, south asian countries uh where plot system plots are a regulatory tool for development uh, now the, it's a very important uh, subsystem because they have key relationships both with the street and the building so they, they they come right in the middle um the street network and its connectivity gives access to people and goods which generates different types of activities uh, the plots accommodate such activities within closed boundaries um, such as buildings uh, spatially, what it means that um, the land left between the street network, um, which is otherwise known as blocks, needs to be subdivided into as smaller parcels of land as possible, which, which we know as plots, on which buildings of different uses may be located. Now, the two main reasons um, for this subdivision. One is each plot needs um, a point of access and the access has to be visible from the streets or other, otherwise there is no access, um, logically speaking. Um, so more plots would mean, therefore, more access points. More access points would mean more active frontage to the street, therefore a street will become more activated if it has more plots um, on it, which therefore means it becomes more safe for pedestrians because pedestrians would be able to see doors and windows on that street. So it becomes safe and attractive, brings more pedestrian, and therefore you know, it goes through a, 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 a positive feedback loop. Now, the second is diversity. Um, now, this is an interesting analogy. I, I think everyone can relate to it. Um, it's a diagram of a, of a cupboard. Um, more subdivisions you get, you have in a cupboard, uh, more, more options you have, or rather it offers you opportunities to store different kinds of things in one place. Um, in other words, it offers you a storage for a diversity of objects or, or things that you would be using. Now, if you can get access to many things in one place, it makes it more efficient. Um, or rather, if you apply th that concept to the plots, which means higher diversity within, within a settlement, uh, makes it more possible to do more things locally and thereby increases life choices, uh, particularly for those with limited travel resources. Um, I, hope, I hope this analogy makes uh, sense. Um, now, next is the uh, building system. A crucial concept here um, is of public and private. Um, amongst other things. But I think this is where um, things have become really messy uh, in current practice. Um, so let's discuss what is public and what is private. Um, any activities that happen outside a plot boundary, uh, like on streets, are public, meaning it is the, spa the space that can be occupied by anybody. Now, any act activities that happen within the plot boundary or within a building are private to a few or one. Now, there are you know, public infrastructures, public buildings, you could say, but they're still managed privately. There are still controls. You cannot have uh, you know, public demonstrations inside a building, per se. So this is a very critical thing to understand. The reason why I'm mentioning this 
is because there are obvious conflicts. Um, and they happen when most private spaces are located to the most active spaces. Um, say, for example, when a bedroom or a bathroom is placed next to a street at the ground level, it's the ground level which, which gets affected the most. So, so theoretically speaking, what it means is more closer you are towards the street, less private activities you can afford further away you go from it from the street it becomes more private um, as this section shows um, now the, the the notion of privacy can be uh, um, can be argued across you know cultures but it is still it can it is still a, um, a human need whether whether or not uh, we we might live in compromised situations now due to the privacy issue the if if you put a private use close to the street the windows are likely to be shut with curtains making the street edge inactive or dead uh, which in turn makes the street less safe for walking and therefore it starts to become uh, more car dominated uh, and you know carry on the unintended consequence it becomes car dependent so th these are a few few images across different you know uh, places and cultures which which show this inherent problem of understanding or rather misunderstanding uh, what is public and, and what is private and and the conflict uh, that arises from lack of the understanding of this concept now therefore we would want to put um rather I must go back to the section again uh, to put the most active edges of the buildings facing towards and as close as possible to the street um so which basically means on the left hand side this uh, well there are two sort of development types that we are all sort of all aware of um one is a tower block uh that that building typology started or emerged around 1920s uh, almost devised by um, you know the famous architect Le Corbusier um, and um, although it didn't get quite implemented in you know at, at scale in France but it did take a massive um, um, turn uh, or became very popular as a development type model in the Americas or in the US and and then later on uh, in in the in more uh, you know in the global south like in, in Brazil or India or China uh, where we tend to have big towers surrounded by uh, green open spaces with massive parking all within one big plot bounded by a massive boundary wall which gives rise to gated communities. Um, now, if you look at that model, a lot of people argue that putting towers on, on, on a land achieves high density, which is not true because as you can see in these two examples, both of these development types achieve the same density. So in the, the option on the left, it basically utilizes land more inefficiently because the the green open space left at the periphery are not necessarily always used they are seen as leftover spaces and uh and as you can see this the the entrances of the buildings are far away from the streets so if you're walking on that street you won't be able to see that entrance and therefore you feel less safe um, and if you're not feeling safe as a pedestrian, your choice is to take up cars and the development again starts to become car dependent. Whereas if we all understand and agree the idea of active streets, um, making it lively and attractive and safe, we would push the building edges as close as possible to the streets, having entrances directly from it without any wall boundary walls um, and each building having their own entities 
not like gated communities where you have only one entrance into the into into your you know block and then you have entrances to your houses which is not visible from the street it also has other issues like legibility um if if you, if i cannot see your door entrance from the street i do not know where you live so i have to go there are different points to which one has to get to to the house so so the, so the option on the left, uh, on the right is called is known as perimeter development now perimeter development is not a building <laughs> it's a relationship as i just explained um, it is about pushing the building front as close as possible to the street and having the private at the back or above so we end up having a private communal or private you know the open space that we end up having are on the interior which is again not public it's meant for private use could be used as gardens or communal spaces uh, now one could argue that looks like a very western model which is again incorrect um, these are examples of perimeter developments across cultures from New York to Morocco to Sweden to Indonesia, Spain, UK, Japan, Netherlands, India. Now, what you can also see is perimeter developments does not necessarily mean high or low dense. Density is, is a very, again, different argument. All it suggests that have your buildings, building edges and fronts as close as possible to the street. Um, well, moving on from that, I'm sure you know there all all of these subsystems are like can of worms, which we can actually discuss, uh, uh, you know, after this you know small presentation. Uh, now, pulling it all together, all these subsystems gives rise to uh, um, to a space which one experiences and creates, uh, uh, you know, atmospheres. Now. It does beg a question: What sort of atmosphere we 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 want? A few an, an atmosphere that responds um, to the bigger issues of climate change and and local issues of 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 uh, social needs, um, and to have something that is not necessarily responding to short term benefits, but uh, linking on to or, or or giving something for our future generations. Um, well, with that, I, I, I would I would actually conclude my presentation for now because I will be really interested um, to take questions um, and as a feedback into into our thinking uh, of writing this book. Uh, I, I hope I hope that <laughs> makes sense, Manish. Sir. Yeah, I mean, um, well, should I call this as part one? Oh, yes, sure. Okay. So will there be a part two? Well, <laughs> I mean, there could be a part two on another day, not today, because okay. I, I really wanted to make it, you know, short and concise. We can always go back to different segments. Sure. Um, <coughs> I'm, more, I... I'm more interested in engaging with the audience. Yes, um, of course. Have, um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I think you have said a lot about how how a small building is no not only related to itself but to a much larger context which we may not uh, may not find relevance um, apparently but it's deeply connected uh, to the larger whole um, that's that's kind of brushing your presentation, but uh, you have gone into details, of course, of how how it is. Um, I it would be nice um, that we uh, kind of open up our faces. It would be nice because I think you know already we are kind of uh, quarantined in our rooms. We can't see each other, and that's why this is a default option. I would say. Of communicating with each other, um, uh, if we can all put our videos on, that is, that is, I think we'll do a little bit of justice of knowing each other. Yes. And 
And uh, uh, that's number one. Number two is, uh, I don't want to make it into a class, but I would rather expect everybody to, you know, ask uh, in response to what Shoham just showed, uh, uh, questions that emanates in your mind. Um, and uh, uh, however foolish and however stupid those questions may sound, but I think stupid questions gave birth to a lot of innovations. Um, and uh, uh, and I, I open this floor or this discussion platform um, by, us, by requesting you to ask any questions that emanates out of this presentation. Uh, sir, can you please elaborate about the perimeter architecture and the tower architecture? Sure. Um, yeah, I think it's that's a very good, uh, well, starting. Um, let me just uh, go back to my thing. Uh, yeah, okay. Right. Um, let, me, let me have this one here. Okay. Now... <clears throat> Let me ask you a few questions. Maybe that will help you to understand, um, you know, the, the problem you, you you are facing, perhaps. Now, in a tower building, right, which is yes. basically an apartment um, stacked on top of you know one another, one another, they normally have an entrance, a communal entrance, right? So you have one point of entrance that goes into a corridor and then from from the corridor you get access to your individual units is that does that make sense do you... yes sir yeah right now when not, not explain it to me um your experience of of a, of say like you're on a street and you're going to visit your friend um living in in the you know in one of these apartments i'm sure you know you've been to there are a lot of gated communities in, in kolkata so i bet you've had that experience so if you could just you know starting from your streets ending up you know to their house if you could just tell us about your experience and then i'll help i'll tell you what the problems or issues are uh if i want to search the search his house in the apartment then i have to and i don't know which house he belongs then i have to knock each and every door and then i could reach him yes I, but even before that right you're on the street you know you know which area that person lives right the first thing you see is going to be a wall isn't it yes sir yeah uh, and sometimes uh, that wall might not be opaque, or, but all you see is, you know, cars parked on the ground level, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, how do you find that street? Is it is it nice to walk? Not really. Not really. And what you would also find, uh, if it's a large gated development with you know walls running across the street. Uh, People littering on it, people peeing on the walls, or or even some people put up shops and and whatnot, right? Yes, sir. And it doesn't give you a very pleasurable experience to walk, and you try and start avoiding that street altogether, right? Yes, sir. So now, what happens when when people start to avoid that street? Some ideas. Well, let me just help you. When people start avoiding a street, it, it makes it gives uh, makes it a very thriving place for antisocial activities, because no one is watching. Yes, right? sir. So yes, if sir. you happen to be one unknown, if you're not knowledgeable about that street, and you are for whatever reason you're walking on that street late late at night, and you know someone can come and mug you, right? Yes, sir. The point I'm trying to make it is not safe to walk. That's one of the first problems, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, the other problem that he just mentioned is to trying to find, so if you were a postman, postman uh, you would, well, you would deliver, uh, you know, the post to the concierge and from there it gets collected. Um, but if you are a visitor, you know, again, you, it, it is quite, it takes quite a while to reach the, at the doorstep of, of, of the person you, you, you're trying to visit, right? Yes, sir. So the contact to the street from someone's house is extended. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah? So now, if you think of a situation, sorry, do you live in one of these uh, complexes or do you live in, on a house on one single plot? No, sir, I live in an apartment. You live in an apartment, okay. Have you been to a house which is not an apartment? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, so, in that case, that experience is probably like you could see the entrance door right from the street, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, the reason you could see the entrance from the street is because the building is pushed to the perimeter of the block. Now, the block, so if you see, my, can you see my cursor, yeah? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So this is a street. Yes, sir. There's a street. There are streets on four sides. Yeah. Yes, sir. It doesn't have to look like a rectangle, but you would always have streets on four sides of a piece of land. Now, that gives rise to a block. We call it a block. So the land locked between the streets, we call it block. Now, the periphery, yeah, means the other outer edge of the block is called, yes, is called perimeter, yeah? Yes, so if you push the building edge the perimeter, makes it a perimeter development. Do you understand that? Uh, sorry, sir, I couldn't hear that. So if you, if you push the building edge right to the perimeter of that block, yes, yeah, sir. makes it into a perimeter development. It's a very simple... <laughs> You know, yes, sir. Simple name. And the reason you push it to, towards the street edge is because of all these issues we just talked about. Because you want to see the entrances from the street, yeah? Yes, sir. Which makes you get to your friend very quickly. Or in other words, the relationship of you yourselves and the street is shortened or more direct. Yes, sir. Yeah? You could also watch people from the house. Uh, um, to see what's happening on the street and and in turn contribute to the street life yes sir which makes the street much more safer yes sir yeah and attractive and therefore you're more likely to walk and <coughs> take the car and just think about the con unintended consequences that we were talking about you know right at the beginning yeah does does that does yes, that sir. make sense Yes, sir, yes. Sir. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing, actually, in, in terms of this power development, um, well, in, 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 uh, in the context of Kolkata, uh, as you know, we would see, uh, privacy is something not valued as much, but it is, it is needed. Um, so although, you know, in, in examples in Europe, you find a lot of open space around it, you don't. You do not find as much open space in here. So you you will find very tall buildings, you know, sitting next to each other, um, which therefore you know gives rise to privacy issues. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Now, um, one more question to you, and I think this is this could well. I hope it's an, in, an interesting discussion that you know people can relate to. And now, living in your apartment. Yes, sir. Um, do you do you hear your neighbor's sound, or do you get to see, you know, the building next door, or what's going on in their bedrooms or toilets, etc.? Is that visible from your rooms? Uh, not visible, but audible. Yeah. Okay. Is that desirable? No. No. Right. So. <laughs> um, that we need to think about these things, isn't it? Whilst you know, when we you know, design our buildings in terms of respecting privacy, because it's something which is 
although not available to all <laughs> to all of us, but certainly desirable. Yes. Sir. <clears throat> I hope that explains your uh, yes, understanding. Shom, can I have a question? Uh, yes. There's a corollary to this. Uh, will you call this perimeter development on your right as opposed to the uh, tower block um, as a kind of a initial form of a gated community? Um, not necessarily, because the gated community, uh, well, you can even have a perimeter block as a gated community if you wanted to. Um, but uh, what it still, the fundamental difference from between a gated community and a perimeter development is you can see the entrances from the streets, where, where, whereas in gated communities that we see, right, you know, uh, as examples, all we see is a blank wall and cars parked on, on the ground floor. Now, there are, there are bigger problems uh, uh, that we face. Is, is, uh, one is to do with parking standards and how many cars we need, we need to park. And therefore, you know, as it happens, we put them on the ground level. And, and therefore, the ground level becomes blank and, and leads to the uh, other co unintended consequences, as I've mentioned. However, this perimeter development can also be converted into a gated community without putting, if, if that is a desirable build, you know, building uh, de or development type by developers, that you want to have gated communities for whatever reason, you can still have them, um, but not compromise. I think what I'm really going on about is able to see front doors from the street. You can still lock, you know, you can still see, say that the internal open space will be only accessed by people and, uh, and it will be, you know, gated in that sense, uh, if you want, if you want to call it that. Uh, but all I'm on about is to yeah. see entrances from the streets that we do not see in the current gated community developments. Yes. Yes. I, 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 I thought that, you know, India is proliferating with gated community. And uh, uh, of course, uh, all the sides uh, are not uh, abutting the street here. It's it's all the all the rows of buildings are actually facing the street, so people can actually have a relationship with the street. That yeah. way, perhaps it's much more different than a gated community. Um, uh, it's more of a courtyard community um, where the common space of the households of the families will perhaps utilize that infrastructure it could be a social infrastructure right? absolutely actually on that uh, uh, you know this this yeah. is this is becoming almost a worldwide issue of of kids being not able to play uh, in a secure environment uh, i mean i'm sure yourselves and you know myself yeah. as yeah. well we, we used to play on streets and uh, or doing all tell me i'm very curious between these two uh, uh two uh, uh, representation um do you achieve the same kind of density well uh, yes you can but as i said earlier uh, in in the left option uh, it does assume you would need to leave that open space because of you know privacy and other issues however if if, if you do flock this whole land with towers yeah you, you would definitely have more density but you do have compromised living standards in terms of overshadowing you know lack of daylight into your rooms and privacy issues and etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah so that could be a really a design challenge because everything is not um the world is inequitable uh it's quite unequal in terms of population and birth rate um so uh, uh what is perhaps feasible in in the west where uh the uh, requirements uh are much less um uh, on the contrary to the east where the requirements are huge um, um, um I still, I, I perhaps still, that is a design challenge that it, it, yeah. it is a, it is a design challenge but also at the same time uh i mean one could do a study of kolkata itself uh, yeah. The thing is, you, you you know, one doesn't have, 
it's, it's, it's to do with land utilization at its best. Um, there's so much, you know, we can, you know, pick up any case study of a gated development. There's so much land that is not well used. I'm not necessarily against towers, although I'm a bit for other reasons, which I'm not, you know, we, we can talk about it. But you can you imagine these towers, right? If you put them at the perimeter of the street, it still works better than uh, a conventional gated development. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I uh, I was teaching um, uh, planning theory, and we came across. You know, you mentioned Le Corbusier um, and his Radian City idea. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> as opposed to uh, the Garden City, which came a little earlier than him. Yeah. Um, and uh, the Garden City, of course, thought of something very utopian. Um, uh, in many many ways, uh, and and uh, uh, the tower was proposed by, um, along with other grid layout, which you very nicely presented. Uh, the building is not a building; it's linked to the network, various infrastructures, including the land and the soil. Um, uh, you know, I I I I I often wonder whether um, we have a trap here. We have a trap here mm -hmm. of trying to emulate uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, spaces and uh, uh, exclude a, a lot of people because it's it's also linked to affordability. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, exclude a lot of people uh, uh, because you're also creating. Uh, uh, if if I if I consider that you know we are repeating these blocks right yeah across the city or across um uh, across the place uh then perhaps it will ga again give rise to uh, uh some kind of a gridded separation uh, well hang on. sorry more I, organic i rather organic. i want to stop you right there sorry the the perimeter development doesn't suggest it's a, it's a, it's a rectilinear grid by any means well, no, i understand that i mean yeah. a rectilinear is not a rectilinear uh <laughs> Uh, even many old cities uh, were rectilinear. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, but they were not organic. Uh, uh, mm. So, uh, so I, I, I'm, 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 I'm talking about. Uh, I, I understand that a rectilinear need not be a rectangle. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it tends towards a rectangle. Right. Um, um, yes, because in order yeah. to create, it tends towards a, it's it's like a little little function, you know, tending towards uh, that, like sure. which we used to do. Uh, but if you look at as opposed to this plan, well, this is rectilinear. You see, very rectilinear, but it's it doesn't it doesn't actually uh, create for individual plots a social space. Right. Um, well, okay. <laughs> it cuts out the social space in the public domain, in the public realm. I think I think that is still available. That is still available. All all we are saying is push the building edge as close to the street, uh, right. and it it can take whatever the shape. It can be a rectangle. It can be whatever yeah. you know. A yeah, this can this can this can be a very interesting discussion. Yeah, because if, for example, you know the image yeah. on the screen right here. Uh, shows how different, you know, it's, it's not a Western concept at all. Like, if, 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 even if you look at the very old settlements, they were all perimeter developments because they pushed their building edge right up to the street. Right. Um, yeah. Which is yeah. quite the uh, the opposite for the tower blocks, and that the tower block is 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 the Western model which we all copied. <laughs> right. Shom, you will be very happy. Just now, Shubhendu the joined from Jadavpur okay. University, and uh, uh, Tapush Mitra from School of Planning and Architecture, Bhopal. Um, um, welcome, Tapush and Shubhendu. Uh, any other question? There should be a lot of question. Chandipa yes. and others. Manas, Any Manas, 
Yeah? Yes, I'm sir. So, I'm sorry, I repeat again. If you could kindly show your face because we are tucked away in our respective rooms because of this, uh, you know, horrid phase that we are all going through. Um, yeah, it'll be great. Um, Any yeah, questions I mean, for Jared, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> good, bad, stupid, clever. Menaz? Hi, hi, Manish. Hi, Manish. Hi, who is this? Hi. Uh, I can't see you. Uh, uh, sorry, I missed... Uh, the large right, part of the presentation, almost the entire presentation. And right. sorry, I mean, I mean, from the little bit that I've heard, uh, um, I can understand it's been a wonderful, wonderfully engaging right. presentation. Uh, right. I, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just losing you. Yes. Yeah, so and uh, in, how are you, Tapush? I mean, fact, uh, in, yeah. Hi, hi, Manish. Yes. Yeah, 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 I've got back, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, we were just... Uh, you know, a couple of... couple of... Uh, weeks back, we have this kind of a discussion where we're talking about public... I mean, how, how do we actually engage people in, in city-making processes, city-building processes? Or how can people be kind of... be included in city-making processes? If I'm not mistaken, perhaps you're talking about things on these lines, right? Yeah. And, right. and there was a there was a discussion where the uh, where we discussed uh, the whole idea of uh, you know the since Monish was just talking about this talk, he mentioned uh, I think we were talking about. Uh, also, well, I, I think you, you um, may have mentioned, I'm not sure. But that day we were discussing uh, Plan Voisin, where, you know, where, where the entire uh, development of the proposal was, start, which started from the south, from the, uh, from the middle of the river, from Notre Dame to perhaps, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Place uh, de la Republique uh, uh, on the north. So and and which actually sweeps past the uh, entire historic district of uh, Paris uh, on the north bank, and uh, the reason that uh, it it failed or most of Corbusier's um, planning thinking failed was that uh, in the in the entire process of uh, development, uh, the people uh, were excluded <laughs> in, in a la yeah. to a large extent. And um, now if we go there, we see, you know, I think on that spine will fall the Pompidou Center and all those, you know, uh, wonderful, terrific uh, uh, sort of uh, urban scape that, uh, that Paris is actually till uh, 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 Republic. So, uh, so, so I, I think this is very important to have, as, as you're saying, the, the edge, the, the, <clears throat> when when we look at the figure ground that uh, we just saw on the screen, the the, the edge which actually sort of uh, meets the 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 edge of the, the 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 built edge meets the street edge, I mean the the pedestrian edge. So I think that 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 is a very important uh, sort of gesture. That's a very important aspect of uh, of growing of a city with people. As we've been talking about, it, as, as been part of most discourses on city, I think. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, do you have a connectivity issue, Tapush? Because we can't see. I, you. I have. I have. I'm not being able to hear yeah. the thing, uh, the, the 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 voices so clearly. But this right. is what I could make out. I'm so sorry. Right. It's it's my problem. It's my problem. It's, it's yeah. It's, so everything is okay at uh, at home and uh, of yeah. course of course yeah, yeah. Yes. and then unfortunately since i had, I had uh, a good share of my afternoon siesta i joined late i'm so sorry about this so. right 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 <laughs> yeah uh, uh anybody else i mean i i think let's have let's have some quick round of questions quick round of questions 
and whilst we are waiting for you know questions i'll be and i'll be it'd be great if if if, if, if you could actually come up with some. Um, I, I would like to add to what uh, you know uh, that was just mentioned. Uh, the idea of uh, involving public in, in terms, you know, in, into the development. Um, <laughs> it's. I, I was actually in a, in a talk yesterday on, on the same topic. Um, it's still not there, and, and and it seems like it's going far away. As as you know. Uh, as development uh, at the rate of development at, at the speed at which it is happening, um, mostly because, because in, you know because of this current we operate in this current political economy uh, which doesn't allow uh, for public participation and it's immensely difficult because you know if there is a develop there's a developer right and they they buy this piece of land. They have their own needs, and you know, to to fit their business plan, and therefore, uh, which are not necessarily aligned with uh, the users or people who live in that area. Um, I mean, definitely, uh, if I'm not wrong, any sort of public participation doesn't happen in India. In the UK, it does happen, but that is also like a tick box. They would design the whole thing, and then they go into this. You know, a public consultation meeting where they show their proposals to a bunch of people who live there. Uh, mostly, the comments are, you know, we don't want this development, and this something is, you know, uh, it puts pressure on our, our health systems, and not enough schools. You're putting a lot of people on this land. Um, so most developers, they would just say, okay, fine, and they just say, we've just done public consultation. The comments we cannot take on board because of your reasons. There isn't any mandatory or mandate that you would have to. It's just a tick boxing exercise. Yeah. And, and that is terribly sad. Unless there's there's a group of people living in the place, you know, become, you know, do a, some form of a co-op and become themselves developers. It is very difficult to have direct public participation into projects. So as designers, and I think it's very, you know, well, you know, fundamentally important that we all take part in some form of political discourse, is to have understand our power and engage with this political system as much as possible. So as designers, our role is to influence with knowledge because we are not developers ourselves. We can be if we choose to, that's a different discussion. Uh, but I think uh, you know, if, right from you know, for students, even more important to understand these uh, you know political structures and how development happens. Uh, it is we should take part into this very actively and and you know and not shy away from it. That architects are only to do with making buildings look pretty. That is not our job. We have a bigger role to play. Which is very true. I mean, uh, uh, which is very true. Any questions? I think in the realm of challenges in architecture, of course, you know, you don't understand the public opinion uh, all of a sudden. Yes. Uh, Anish, uh, uh, and Soham, uh, since students are not speaking much, I just wanted to, uh, you know, raise one little uh, point to bring one little point to the table. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in, if, if you're looking at, uh, you know, the Smart Cities Initiative, mm -hmm. if you're looking at the Smart City Initiative, we're looking at the area-based development, uh, ABD, that, yeah. uh, that, 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 is a, that is a standard model, that, that the template of uh, Smart City Development. Uh, we see, I mean, just responding to this, this particular concern, we see that... Uh, um the the um, informal sector is nowhere is absolutely mm. nowhere in the overall sort of template and overall concern of uh, the smart city abd based uh, sort of development so you know in in that uh, context it 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 seems that people really doesn't have any role to play in the entire uh, sort of program of uh, the ABD based uh, smart city development in this country at least so um, and and we have uh, from the school of planning and architecture we have been involved in couple of 
initiatives um, of smart city in in madhya pradesh uh, especially uh, we have been consultants uh, in in smart city abd uh, based uh, uh, you know templates so uh, i i i and and uh, it is it's very sad that that uh, people uh, i mean uh, forget about the other uh, real estate calculations where we have we have gone massively wrong in calculating the the um, the housing demands and things mm. like that uh, but but one thing i think we've miserably fa- failed is uh, uh, that we have not been able to sort of include the informal sector mm. specifically so um, um so um, are there any uh, sort of uh, international uh, case studies or examples where they have uh, got the uh, these kind of people in the entire initiative because in india it's it's been a, I, i think one this is one of the crucial mistakes or the, the crucial sort of uh, you know you know i mean one of the major points why 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 it it, it can't possibly be people centric because it actually sort of doesn't include them at all mm. uh, so yeah could, could could you get some international could you could you share some international case studies with that yeah uh, i mean um, the thing is uh, the issue here is is mostly to do with scale of development um, if it's a massive volume house building project Uh, it becomes immensely difficult to get every i mean it can understand right if it's a area of like i don't know um 50 hectares or something it, it becomes very difficult to engage everyone in that area to have say in the development or what they are exactly want or, or rather have a direct participation few examples that i can think of in uk is as i mentioned earlier uh, they are in the form of co-ops so um there was a project uh, in in leeds it's called lilac um so what they did there was there were a few people uh who got together formed this you know corporation they found an architect and um they they had um they had visions in or rather objectives what they wanted to achieve from that development say for example sustainability affordable housing um uh, housing for elderly people so they said we want these things can you make it, make it happen so and they found an architect and they they bought a piece of land putting you know you know their money together um and it it worked uh, to be honest one of the big the, the biggest scale of of such co-op action uh, the example that i can refer to is garden city uh, in letchworth because that's how it actually started Ebenezer Howard got in touch with you know his rich friends and they all put their money in a pot um they they uh, all bought this huge massive piece of land um and uh, the principle the core principle of that development which is now actually lost um not from Letchworth but the idea of garden city is uh, it will be managed and owned by the residents anything that happens in that piece of town <clears throat> will have a say of, of of everyone living in that place which is the still the way it functions we are actually currently doing a project in letchworth that's you know that's wh- why we know a bit more about it um uh, letchworth garden garden city is not necessarily mean it's a low dense suburban housing uh, project outside uh, a, a city it is about um a self sustaining uh, community which has the capacity to you know run its operations in terms of food production job opportunities etc but the the important point here to make is any development profit that comes or, or any profit that comes from the development goes back into the development itself because there are no a uh, private developers involved in direct participation because the control lies with the people but that's that's the biggest scale of you know community participatory projects that i can think of and i think that is there is an insurgence of that idea you know uh, slowly happening yeah i mean uh, uh, shoham uh, and tapush uh, we can um, of course i mean the community participation is really the uh, moot point nowadays it used to be post 70s as well 
Yeah. Uh, where Rod Hackney and others were starting to rebuild and reconstruct and provide housing out yeah. of those ugly council housings. Um, uh, but but the point is, uh, you know, um, uh, a very famous uh, practitioner uh, of uh, uh, involving community said, people never participate. Please don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, you know why we have to ask ourselves why people in a slum participate more for a common program than, than people living in individual houses in, say, South Calcutta. Middle class housing or upper class housing. Or in Salt Lake, for that matter. So you need to have a burning issue to, in the context. Here, Shohum is talking about an invisible burning issue, which is environment and climate change and other bigger issues. Uh, so I think, as an architect, uh, we will have less and less celebrated architects like Le Corbusier and others. And we'll have more and more architects who are responsive and conscious about the larger whole. I would like to uh, draw that kind of attention with, uh, uh, with should, that's what I draw from Shoham's presentation. Um, uh, and, and, you know, we also have a specific role to play as an architect in the community. Um, uh, and we should also try and work people who are better equipped or better uh, knowledgeable about uh, uh, gathering public opinion. And the very fact that the word gathering for public opinion uh, could be also viewed very negatively, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can, I can, I can, uh, but I would rather again get back to the question of students responding to um, um, my last time. You may even write the questions on the chat box um, uh, if you feel shy, but you shouldn't feel shy because you're, you're embarking into, uh, into, a, into a profession which needs you more and more uh, addressing public realm issues, right? Um, uh, you know, projects will no longer come on your table. Um, you have to uh, mobilize the opinions of the people towards the project. Uh, the days are of that nature, right? Um, and, uh, 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 and I think that's a very, very good development. Uh, and and uh, I am an architect, so I should not be um, uh, doing public participation, that kind of an approach are all diffused today, right? Are all diffused. I mean, uh, there's a Bengali phrase. Um, whatever is necessary to do uh, to make uh, your response, your responsive understanding of the city that we are in and to ameliorate that and to bring about a change in our thinking of designing a settlement. Um, uh, is is the real issue, right? Is the real issue. I mean, whatever needs to be done, be it in the house or be it in your neighborhood or be it in your city that you live in. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, Shoham, this is perhaps, this thinking perhaps has come more in the West uh, and less in here because we are rushing, we are running, yeah? Hmm. Uh, and uh, it's a huge population. We have got so many other things to address, um, and and so on. So I think I think can we stick to our our role as an architect that we are studying, uh, and the challenges that we uh, face um, uh, from the students? Please, can we can we get some good, nice, stupid questions? I think uh, Shoptok has raised 
um, his hands. Yes, sir. Sir, yeah. actually, for me, uh, the community one thing is better. Actually, but I want to know that uh, the view that will we will get from the tower building will not ever uh, get it from the community one or the perimeter one. So, how can we include both of the view and the community thing in uh, in one? That's a very good question. Shubhendu Dash also has a question. And uh, Shubhendu Da. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Uh, good, good evening. evening. My name is, uh, good evening, Soham. I'm really sorry. I just, you know, joined it, and I missed the wonderful presentation that Soham gave. And we have recorded. Uh, you know, uh, it's yeah. recorded, so I'm going to definitely catch up with it. You know, as a practicing architect, uh, Soham, I just had one question, which I wanted to know: how things are happening out there in the UK and the Europe? You know, one thing that we face as a challenge here. You know, uh, you know, because there are priorities set for architects, right? When we respond to a, a, a pro program or a project, you know, and the yeah. first priority obviously is to respond to the client's needs. It's the uh, the economy of the project, uh, the viability of the project. But the second burden that we have is going through the entire process of, you know, statutory and the in the and the red tapism that is there in our country. Okay, there are yeah. at least you know if you are doing, for example. Care project in our country. You know, if it's a large yeah. care project, it's a community development. Multiple programs are involved. You know, there are some 17, 18 licenses which are required. Then you have fire approvals. Then you have, you know, your municipal approvals. Then you have to go to your MOEF departments. The government and all these departments are independent of each other. You have to yeah. run literally from pillar to post. You know, and public participation. At least, even if a single project, which can make a lot of difference. You know, uh, if we think. From the perspective of the people, any project, for example, even if it's small or big, you know, if you think from the perspective of the people, you can make things, uh, you know, very malleable. You can make things uh, plural. You can make things uh, more um, porous, so that you know people can enjoy it. But it becomes last thing in our mind, you know, because we have to go through all the processes before you can respond to that, you know, to, to the mm. to the more softer and more intangible things, right? Yeah. So I just wanted to know, you know, uh, you know, what are the situation, you know, in 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 the perspective of UK or European communities? How is that a challenge that you face, or is it something um, which we are facing on a regular basis? Well, it, well, it's a very interesting question, and I think you know the the the, the challenges that you're referring to. Um, I mean, it it does exist in in one form or the other, and the main reason, again, I would you know state it is because. In most part of the world, we still live in neoliberal economy. I mean, that is something we cannot avoid. As long as you know there is this deregulated capitalism, we cannot do much against you know the fast-paced development and the profit being taken away from you know by the developers and and the victims are are, are the users or or, or or the you know residents. However, we still you know, as much as we can, being, you know, understanding our role in the power structure is to influence. And I think that's why, or, or you know, someone said the other day, we, we, we need a band of resistance. You know? If we do not raise any voice or any, any sort of, you know, sticking up, uh, this thing will carry on as business as usual. So uh, being designers, practitioners, uh, um, thinkers, we do have to respond to our daily needs uh, as you know to the project briefs and stacking up the you know area schedule meeting numbers and therefore so that the project is viable for the client and we get paid and therefore we can pay our bills but also at the same time we can trick the developers by not exactly telling them that oh we are actually there there are public benefits but they don't have to know that as long as we can fold it in within our design practice, but telling them the benefits that they would get from this, you know, amazing design, like, look, Mr. Developer, this is amazing, you know, design will make you lots of money. But what we wouldn't tell them that uh, it, it also gives you great benefits for the surrounding, you know, neighborhood. Maybe they are, they're not, they might be react, reactionary, uh, you know, uh, processes that lead from it. However, uh, there are a lot of developers currently, you know, at least I know of in the UK, who have a social conscience. And I, I, that happens through, you know, 
what it, you know, all it takes is one amazing project and then it has a ripple effect. And, and therefore smaller, well, not necessarily bigger developers, smaller developers become socially, more socially conscious and then they start to do more projects and you know, start to take up scale. Change is slow, but <laughs> it's just, I think as, as, as us as designers, all we have to is keep trying, writing you know, articles, making, having these amazing Zoom calls. Um, that's the only way, sadly. Yeah, I mean, uh, we should not be so sad about it. I mean, I think <laughs> there are other professions as well. Yes. Uh, who are who are trying to do many things in this regard. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I think it's an issue of greed versus requirement. I mean, the greed doesn't necessarily always emanate in the East. Right. No. Uh, greed for development. Right. Uh, and 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 it also develops in the West, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, yeah. the 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 things uh, perhaps the West has, due to various sectors working consolidatedly mm. over the years, uh, that's why they're advanced. That's why they're much more advanced in terms of building institutions, um, uh, which which uh, which greater. But there is a need of further institutions. I think those are very political. Uh, uh, political science discussion and economic discussion, uh, which uh, uh, which uh, which varies from you need to understand the belly of a city uh, to to know how the city operates in the mm. dark, right? Mm. Um, and uh, uh, and things like that. But yeah. coming to yeah. coming to coming to uh, uh, yes, Shubhendu. Shubrindu, let me introduce you. Shubrindu is actually a, a, a teacher with us. Uh, he teaches uh, uh, design um, for our students and uh, he also uh, look, heads the edifice in Kolkata. Um, so uh, edifice, which is a national organization um, based in Bangalore yeah. and Bombay. Um, so I Shubrindu, you want to add or anything? Then I will go to Shopkar. Yeah. Uh, just one more thing before I think I think Shabtukhal also you know uh, mentioned a very good point, but you know just to conclude on what I was what I just started and um, you know so I'm pleased to meet you, uh, you know uh, I, I I worked for a few years in the U.S. before coming back to India and then you know worked in Mumbai for several years before coming back to Kolkata again and you know uh, you know so the thing is uh, I I you know I'm just talking about uh, you know not a very big project like an urban scale project where the impact is very huge and we have to really go through people participation but smaller projects let's mm -hmm. say an office building with let's say a retail at the base or you know a podium which has multiple functions you know <laughs> those kind of projects uh, which really you know if it's built in a very critical area in the city it really has a lot of impact you know with yeah. uh, in the community level at different uh, you know uh, from different perspectives and now I recall when we used to do projects in the U.S., you know, there used to be uh, something called a public, uh, not not public participation, really. But we had to at least put forward our project in a community center where people could just come and comment. You know, they might it might not be a critical analysis from their side, but they could just kind of, you know, comment on a piece of paper and put it in a drop box so that, you know, we know we can analyze that what impact the project will have into the local community. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I was yeah. saying, because here in our, you know, in our country, because we are already so much engrossed with getting our projects moved through the, you know, red tapeism and the kind of approval process that are required. You know, if we add one more burden to the architect and the developer that, you know, you, you, you know, you have to take your fire approvals, you have to take your municipal approvals, you have to take your pollution approvals, but yet you also have to, you know, you know, display your project and take a community level approval. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it will be a huge burden. I know, I'm sure. And people Absolutely. will say, hey, God, please, you know, you have added, you know, which, which is the last thing that we need because anyways, things do not move. But yeah. it is so important because, yeah. you know, I, I live in a uh, you know community and just architects, well, I know just they are keeping on adding, you know, projects and buildings in our community, which perhaps we would not have, you know, wanted it, right? So we need to have some voice as a as a citizen if i am a non architect right 
So right. how do we bring that uh, in our in our communities? Uh, uh, is absolutely. that something that we can talk about? Yeah, that I mean, is something that I would like. Yeah. Just to quickly respond to that, uh, and then we can. Um, I'm also want to respond to um, uh, Shop Talk's uh, very interesting question. So on, on that, actually, um, again, the the point of doing public consultation is not necessarily just for the sake of doing it, but to actually have uh, the design to respond to, to their needs. So if we cannot do those things for, you know, because it, it adds the red tape, but if if possible, we can be. Uh, very conscious or, or, or enlightened architects or designers who understands uh, those needs of, of the users. Uh, so not necessarily having a, a massive consultation process, but understanding what they would need without going through that complex process and involving or putting that thinking whilst we design, if, if, if that makes sense. So, so, I, I I think the, the discussion on public participation can go on. Yeah. I spent my initial days of architecture after passing architecture, walking on the streets of Calcutta for years together, donkey's years, trying to know what the people want. Right? Uh, yeah. People want various things. <laughs> people, you know, like we always, always, always say, um, always said about photography uh, that it is a subjective lie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the participation thing has become like that. You know, you want how you want them to speak about a project, all these community planning. You know, the way we are presenting it, it will kind of bring, it's like a design of a questionnaire. Mm. If you ask a question, that who among those three ministers you think will be the prime minister? Yeah. And somebody from the public says Narendra Modi. So that becomes uh, like that. You know, I mean, so it's, it's a, within the question, there will be. So this community participation has also become um, uh, a kind of a, a very uh, talked about, uh, debated, yeah. uh, ridiculed at times. And there are some very interesting community participation. Uh, while why the Chakmas in the Mizoram live in a small area, live in a small area, talking to each other and trying to rectify and live very peacefully in a small portion because they don't recognize by the Indian government. Yeah. They have a common agenda to fulfill. There, the participation is maximum, right? So we are actually very disparate in terms of our aspirations, mm. in terms of our needs. Uh, India is a very disparate country still, right? Uh, uh, and, 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 and for that matter, the entire world is very disparate. Uh, Shoptok's question is very interesting. Yeah. But we can go on. It's a very interesting um, area of discussion. Yeah, L let me get to that. Uh, I think Shoptok, you had a very interesting question. Uh, especially when you said views from 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 a tower, what I gather from that is that view is precious, and therefore, if you if you get that view from that apartment, makes that apartment expensive, right? So it is to do with the value of 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 that apartment and desirability. Now, uh, I'm not necessarily against towers per se, but if if we just take the idea of view, right? Uh, or, and 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 its related value of the department. If you change the perception of the view, if you if you, uh, or rather the idea of the view from the top of the tower, but not necessarily the view itself. What about a very amazing, beautiful view of the street where you live? So you do not necessarily enjoy the view of the city from a tower, but what about the every day when you go into your house, you walk by this amazing street that you could play and you know see the trees and kids on the street, uh, you know people sitting on their outlaws and having this amazing chat. Um, and amidst all, you hear it and you feel energized, and then you get to your room, and you can even watch all of this from your room as well. I know it's a very different kind of a view. 
Now, the question is, which view would you prefer? Is it being isolated in the 24th floor, getting the view of the city all by yourself, not able to see any person at all at, from that scale, or rather being on the fifth story of a building and trying to engage with people at the street, shouting, screaming, having fun, and um, you know, taking part in Durga Puja on the streets and et cetera, et cetera. It's a question. <laughs> yeah, but it, it it really, really doesn't include uh, the varied requirement of a community or a, or, 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 or society, right? Uh, uh, the society can have various requirements yes. um, and uh, somebody might actually want to live. And, and, and we are in the in the business of provision yeah. and um, of, 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 of those aspirations. Yeah. And I think that is our primary uh, uh, job. The issue is that how do we do we perhaps give that within that requirement, within that uh, consciousness of the environment, mm -hmm. um, larger environment, how we can do that trade off? Yes. Um, uh, and I think that is uh, uh, that is there. I mean, I I love this mix. There are ta towers and uh, not ta non towers. I mm. love this mix. The point I, I think is not about the have... diversity of uh, forms mm. and architecture. Yeah, um, but... and, and I think that uh, it is it is it is not not a bad idea to have this mix. But the who will decide? Who will decide? Who will measure the happiness in the city? Well, the yeah. thing is, that is that is another. To, another, to add, another issue to, to ask you this give happiness to the overall collective Manish, uh, society Manish, if you if you if you allow me to just sort of uh, intervene yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, as much as we'd like to believe that uh, the architect is the centerpiece of development and uh, development thoughts uh, <laughs> i mean unfortunately <laughs> it's not like that yeah um, i remember having um, a discussion with uh, elizabeth patter zyberg uh, i think uh, i think uh, well, 10 years back um, yeah. and uh, she was saying that the, the the most important thing that you you people are doing in india is the mo the most difficult thing that yes. you have on your hands is you are actually dealing with 25000 people per square kilometer that Absolutely. kind of densities Absolutely. i think that's the most yeah. important thing i mean in the whole uh, business of development uh, and that, uh, i i think that's one of the reason why we see more and more social uh, scientists coming into yes. mm. our discussions we are now talking about more and more about uh, the works of uh, Saskia Sassen and mm, Senate and you know all these people. Yeah. And uh, if we look at the bigger programs of uh, uh, of the government of India, the the yojanas, the missions. If we're looking at, uh, as I said before, uh, the smart city mission. Now the um, now the now the housing programs. The and the 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 huge housing programs and all that we are actually looking at you know various kinds of agencies we're looking at financial agencies and it's it's so difficult to you know get uh, small ticket uh, loans from uh, we're talking about uh, you know uh, the pmay program and and then we are stuck with uh, you know 5 lakh rupees loan and uh, as as architects we really don't have much say in of course, in designing of, of the units and uh, uh, placing the, the, the entire sort of uh, stock in, in, in the city. So, yeah. so when we are looking at the body of the city, I think uh, architects and urban designers should actually be part of this whole um, uh, uh, you know, decision making process. But yeah, and, yeah, and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, you know, Work is being done to that uh, uh, to, to, to that uh, you know goal, but uh, I, I think it, it will need a little time. Maybe the second phase, no, or something like that. Yeah. And we are we are slowly being part of uh, the, the process. But, absolutely, uh, but absolutely. Again, but I, again, I don't uh, disagree in, in any matters. I was mm -hmm. just saying that uh, uh, I was uh, Tapush. Uh, I, I think uh, we are on the same page on this, and yeah. we are all in the same page. Uh, that uh, we, have uh, we, need to. we have to be Monish. Uh, we have to be and uh, uh, there is no divergence of opinion here uh, uh, the only thing that i am trying to stress with the target audience and 
and you know um, and 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 uh, our limitations of time of one and a half to two hours of discussion um, uh, because I think it's it's very very important um, to uh, to engage our minds uh, may not be physically uh, that's why we call architects you know I mean mm. you need to know services you need to know many other things um, uh, we are not called engineers per se which only will address uh, a particular issue uh, we will have to be even aware how this money will roll into to transform the plan into a reality um, i am transported to the idea of of those two fantastic urban designer in new york um, who wrote that book called urban design as a public space uh, where uh, they actually contested mayor election um, because they decided that uh, the theater street is not becoming theater anymore it's becoming usurped by other activities so the whole understanding of transferable development rights of correcting the city bringing in corrective measures uh, were all started by um, uh, within the remit of an architectural uh, domain and uh, jokingly speaking you know uh, our very famous architect one of the famous architect in india rajiv katpaliya um, was working uh, for kulu kutipsha development authority to uh, to transform uh, the the lot of uh, uh, lot of environmental problems within the lad bazar area of charminar and he was presenting something about his efforts that he has done uh, for kulukutup sharban development authority which looks after lad bazar charminar this is the area the community besides the charminar you know charminar is a world heritage site and 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 uh, uh, and you have got all that it's community which is very very dense etc uh with all concomitant problems of services overloading of services overstressed of infrastructure now i didn't realize that whether he from all the way from uh, ahmedabad uh how he is solving the problem of community discussions i didn't realize that but that doesn't preclude to say that one should not do community participation yeah i don't understand how rajiv katpalia in the morning getting up in the morning will decide that whether i should work pro bono for kulu kutub shah authority or i will work for a 300 crore project in calcutta okay but that doesn't preclude any architects to think about the concerns that are mentioned in this platform today but i think these things will come with more matured mm -hmm. community with more educated community education is is i think it's a, it's a, it's a homogenous thing has to happen mm. like like i remember when i went to russia the series of houses are so moron the stalin housing but they were kind of celebrated architecture at one point of time which is no longer accepted uh, today the 60s redevelopment after the war after industrialization in the uk people has brought them down by liquid oxygen yeah because of social issues yeah replacing it replacing them with more social connect hmm. to their built up spaces so that concern is happening in india 
I mean, uh, is happening in India. Some of them are happening in a very crass way, like the gated mm. community. Uh, uh, in a very crass way, uh, it, it stinks of, uh, you know, uh, it stinks of uh, a very gilded, uh, uh, pricey uh, aesthetics. Uh, but uh, but but I think I think the process is still on. There are a lot of efforts mm. going on in different directions and different parts of the world with the other country. And I I really like the missions. One of the missions which Tapush mentioned. Um, is a step in the right direction. Is uh, is is about is about uh, the Ridai project. You know, you have an existing city. How you correct uh, some of the uh, ills that has crept in? How you try to use the existing legal system or existing institutions? to ameliorate those problems and provide solutions. So mm. I think that is a very uh, interesting area for architects in India to uh, get in because we cannot think of cities after cities with, you know, you rub them out and then build of a particular model. You know, the days of Lechworth and Welwyn are gone. Right? Monich, um, since, you're talk since, since you... you, you... Uh, you have, we have students of architecture here. I just since you uh, just mentioned uh, social housing in uh, Soviet Russia, I just no. wanted to. I mean, just for reference, I I, I uh, remember uh, a film by Christoph Zanussi, uh, yes. uh, the, the from the Polish New Wave. Uh, yes, it's called uh, Behind the Wall. You know, yeah. there there he shows uh, poly, uh, post war uh, post war Polish uh, social housing, and I, I think there is a lot of uh, lots of things to learn from there also. That of course. Uh, mm. you know, uh, under of the, course, of course, of course. Um, I mean, behind the veil of uh, a kind of a template, there yeah. there are differences, and they they could do some wonderful housing within, say, let's say, uh, four hundred square uh, square foot, and uh, people. Uh, lived uh, varied uh, varied uh, ways of I mean uh, exercise varies varied ways of living systems yeah. within that you know yeah so, so I, I think that's also a learning uh, true. I, I think uh, we very true bring very up, true there are lot, lots of examples and you know, students of architecture actually as you said very rightly in from Russian from the Soviet era from Polish era uh, I mean post war uh, social housing era. Uh, we have we have lots of lessons actually from all yes. over the place, all over the world yes. to learn yes. Yes. Uh, Amrut, Hridai and all these schemes and there are lots of good yeah. things about Doshi's Aranya about project is such a fantastic project. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally think really I, I personally uh, visited Aranya uh, with a with a studio a uh, couple of years yeah. back and. Uh, it looked. I, I think it's a different discussion, but it looked a little yeah. dated, uh, especially the 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 inner inner uh, sanctums, uh, quote unquote, mm. of Aranya. Yeah. Uh, no, that could be weakness. <laughs> that could be weakness. <laughs> but, but, but but the whole idea is, you see, there is a hiatus between ideation and translation. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 think, I think we have to do from from schools of architecture. We we need to do you know so so called architectural auditing of of these uh, projects. You know these yeah. uh, projects, and I, yeah, I think yeah. students have lots of things to learn from uh, from, from the past. True. We have to bring yeah. all these things. Can we pack up uh, after two questions? Two very interesting questions like Shoptok. Uh, I think you know Shoptok was not completely answered. Uh, in a, in a, uh, by, by Shoham's uh, presentation. Um, uh, the answer is that, you know, uh, different kind of uh, requirements will exist. Um, um, and uh, uh, even the person who loves to stay on the 20th floor is also a people. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the um, point is not to have one or the other, is to understand yeah, yeah. which yeah. is appropriate in where. Yeah, yeah. It's the understanding of location. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Shyamdipa has a question, which I don't know why Shyamdipa is feeling shy to. Yeah. Why didn't you ask the question instead of me asking about it? Shyamdipa? 
Uh, so, like, uh, I just have a very basic question. This is not a very, like, how yeah. should we displace all the HVAC equipments, like, to maintain the balance of the environment? <laughs> Well, not necessarily. Well, can we? It was a big question again. You know, it's similar to what Choptak was saying. The idea of being environmentally conscious does not mean to get rid of, you know, you know, to compromise our our comfort right from day zero. Uh, you know, it's 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 an evolution. But it the thing is, it it all needs a very big structural change. So if you, if if you remember the first slide, I think it was one of the most important one, is of the unintended consequence. The reason we have HVAC is because the temperature is going up. The reason the temperatures are going up is, is because there's a lot of you know cars on the street. And the reason there's a lot of cars on the street is because there's lack of public infrastructure. The, there's, the reason there's lack of public infrastructure is, is because there's lack of government funding. And, and I think, as, as Tapos was saying earlier, yeah. the different disciplines are entangled so much that you cannot really have one solution to all the problems. But nevertheless, it is still important to understand and raise in a red flag. Hang on. Having HVAC is going to create massive problems in the future. So someone needs to do that. And then slowly but surely, it will start a ripple effect. You know, you can always start with the smallest change until it gets to the biggest scale of, you know, gets to the prime minister. Oh, hang on, we have to change our policies for, for, for movement and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Only then we can get rid of all the HVACs from our houses. <laughs> but if we can, within our conscious effort, try to adopt passive architectural, you know, concepts to minimize the load, not necessarily getting rid of it. Um, and and then it also in turn uh, has an impact on our own behaviors, if you see what I mean. So you might tell yourself, uh, maybe today I will not try and you know uh, use the car or walk to that place. Slowly, if everyone started to do that, uh, our car dependencies might go down. Uh, if the car dependencies go down, the amount of cars or you know the emissions on the street will go down. And you can see where it could lead to but um it is it's you know again it's a very slow process but someone has to start <laughs> yeah. any other question any other question i expect some more some more trickier simpler stupid question i've not got a stupid question yet i love stupid questions by the way, anyone can ask questions. You don't have to be a student. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, no, we don't want to push you. This is not a class per se, but you know, um, uh, and uh, I'm, even in class, I don't push. And, yeah. Um, uh, one should not push anybody. Why one should push? Everybody has a uh, way of uh, looking at things. And um, well, all that we can do is to show you another alternative mm. uh, that is in thinking by different people, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Shubrindu, Choptok, who else? Let me see the uh, uh, Choptok. Rinte, Rinte from Mizoram. Rinte, where are you? I can't see you. Rinte? I'm here, sir. Yes, but where is your video? Yeah. Rinti, how are you? How cold is it in Mizoram? Uh, it's it's very, very cold, sir. Right, right, right. So uh, uh, I'm sure you enjoyed and you followed, if not fully, but uh, uh, quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. OK, you have any basic questions? Or um, you may not have questions also. Uh, not really, sir. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, we are planning our study tour to Mizoram in September. Oh, wow. Yeah. We will be planning our study tour. We'll focus our attention. We at Sister Nibedita University, show him. He'll be pleased to know. Um, below the logo, 
we are saying that the cities are our laboratories. It's a good logo. And I, and I can't really uh, take all these uh, uh, students um, out on the street mm. because, uh, because of this horrible time that we're going through. Um, uh, but uh, I hope this uh, phase is going to come down and I pray that whatever that very famous Israel doctor said is correct. Because even in the pandemic, uh, uh, the West has failed to respond. Uh, today, a large part of Africa remains unvaccinated. Yeah. Uh, I think the West has completely failed. They take pride that all of them got vaccinated, which is a foolish pride, I would say. Uh, and I think, uh, I hope that uh, that uh, the doctor from Israel is correct, that Omicron is a natural vaccine. And then we can take our students to see the, see the city, uh, talk about all these dimensions that you spoke uh, while working on our drawings, because an architectural the traditional way of looking at architecture and his deliverables, if I may say, his, his drawings. Um, uh, but things are changing, you know. I mean, not everybody need to change and everybody need to express that. Uh, if everybody starts talking, then who will produce the drawings? Drawings are also necessary. Yeah. Drawings are also necessary. Yeah. Right. Um, so... Uh, uh, so uh, I think there some of you all will be more attracted to the issue of community participation, environmental law. But even if you are not, and you're more interested in doing drawings, uh, which are equally important, uh, uh, is that it doesn't preclude you to, or you sh should also embrace uh, the other concerns which some of your friends mm. will perhaps be doing that more, right? Yes. Uh, so I think in that way, uh, it will be more equitable. Uh, uh, and uh, some of them will do very good tall buildings. Some of them will do a lot of good perimeter development. Uh, some of them will do uh, less cliche uh, gated community. Um, and uh, some of them will do uh, uh, very pioneering, innovative, future-looking work and, uh, and will show the way uh, towards a better future. Um, so I think it's a mix all the time. Mm. Um, and, 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 uh, um, uh, and, and, and even, even when I teach you history, I always try to uh, talk about technology, politics, power, trade and commerce, location. Um, you know, um, uh, what you perhaps uh, get a planning permission in India with five rupees uh, wrongly, perhaps you have to pay 500 rupees for a planning permission in the UK uh, for a project which should not get a planning permission. <laughs> so uh, the scale varies. Uh, I know, I know. I have been, I have been involved with the uh, uh, with with the municipality in York, um, and they were saying how judicious and how that responds to Shubrindu's answer. There are there are municipalities which are um, which are not not uh, you know holy cows up there as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and surveyors and uh, uh, in in the in the in the West, which 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 does a lot of things. But the, those things will automatically come. There are stages which.
but one should be very conscious about all that one should be conscious about economy and things like that and that's what that's what uh, it's all about i hope um it 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 could have been more engaging but it was very engaging um and uh, um i think i think uh, we will have more such sessions um and uh, uh, and uh, you just started this is this is uh, you're in the you just started so i think we will have more and more um engagement and discussion um uh, and thank you shoham for um bringing it out so lucidly and let me tell you i saw and i could identify all the sketches are by shoham <laughs> in that slide all the sketches are by him these are not downloaded slides from google you know yeah, even the writing nice. even the writing is by shoham shoham is an artist at the end of the day yeah um uh, and uh, uh uh art is a uh, science is a subset of art i would say uh, and so he had the he had he had he had uh, so uh, uh um, and and i i think i wish shoham all the best and uh, i i wish sho we are going to have more sessions when they will have a lot of opinion they're not yet opinionated let's say they're not yet opinionated they're not formed up their opinion but i think it will form it will form and it will be it will it will get more and more interaction and had it been not online and offline we could have actually seen them more Uh, there are limitations of online classes you know i have not seen all of them together as yet which is a pity yeah, mm, yeah. Um, uh, so um, so uh, that is uh, that is that uh, thank you very much for coming thank you thank you thank you uh, for uh, hosting and inviting uh, me great hearing you uh, uh, i i uh, can i can i um, say that you will show more of your works uh, that you have failed to address some of the issues which you mentioned today sure, um, sure. Uh, not what you have succeeded we will see what you have succeeded uh, but i would like to hear the main story of where you failed to comply yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, well i cannot ask this to richard rogers uh, <laughs> I cannot ask this to uh, Norman Foster, who anyway has less number of projects in the UK because of stringent uh, regulations. Um, he has got more such projects, large-scale projects outside the UK. Um, uh, but 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 that's a different issue. Yeah. Um, that's an different issue. So I conclude it here. Uh, uh, and Tapush, uh, wonderful um, that you have also joined. uh we would like to have you but there is no restrictions we could have continued but there is a um uh, there is a uh, there is a time limit people has to go and uh, so we will have more such sessions shoham absolutely yeah and yeah. we should have uh you know maybe maybe when you come next or we fly you in to take classes when they are in in their third years i i love to do that honestly yeah. <laughs> yeah. thank you yeah a, thank you thank you yeah um uh, we have great uh, faith in uh, in shoham and i think shoham will also rectify the wrongs in the uk a little hopefully i i yeah <laughs> there are a lot of wrongs as well not wrongs not wrongs but uh try to influence to make uh, a better future <laughs> thank you thank you everybody bye cheers bye cheers